Hi, good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for coming. And uh, we're going to spend the next hour talking about uh, how difficult it is to work in the sport industry. Uh, but first of all, uh, please remember that tomorrow at 1 p.m., we have to be here also because we have a, a job match uh, session. Okay, so do not forget it. Tomorrow at 1, 1 p.m. I, if I remember it, I try to repeat it at the end of the uh, of the session. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Miguel Angel Hernandez. Uh, I was a lucky guy because uh, I was working for Telefonica, you know, the main telecom operator here in Spain. Um, Suddenly, uh, a, old, a former friend of mine called me and said, uh, Miguel, do you want to join Real Madrid? And I say, wow. <laughs> At that time, I have to be honest with you, I never thought that working for a sport was an option. I mean, I've been working in the telecom industry, or internet, and different uh, companies around the, in the Telefonica ecosystem. But for me, sport was something that I enjoy, but not a profession for, for the future. So I joined Real Madrid in, uh, in the year 2000, uh, six months after Florentino was named uh, president of, of the club. And I spent about eight years there, first of all working for the media, as a head of media of the club, in charge of all things like the mobile phones, uh, website, and those kind of, of things. But remember that we were at the year 2000, and no Instagram, no face, uh, Facebook, no Twitter or X at that time. So the, the main uh, digital asset we have in order to communicate with our fans was the, uh, the website. And also the mobile, but you are really, really young, and probably none of you has uh, texted with uh, SMS. <laughs> right now, all of you use WhatsApp or Telegram or those kind of, of tools. But at that time, as I told you, was the beginning of the era of the sport business. Uh, I remember that the Real Madrid revenue in the season 2000-2001 was around 120 million euros. That's nothing. That's nothing. It was a small amount of money. And I mean, in order to compare with Telefonica or Terra, that was the company I was working for, that's the revenue we did in uh, one month or something like that. <laughs> and Real Madrid did it in the, whole, uh, in the whole season. But as I told you, I, I feel I'm a, I'm a lucky guy because I have the opportunity to work for the, probably or for me, the best uh, sport entity in, in the world. As you can see in the picture, I'm a Football fan, but also a Formula One fan. Uh, anybody of you knows who is the owner of that uh, helmet? Who is the driver of that helmet? No? Alain Prost? Do you know Alain Prost? It's an old one. <laughs> okay, and, and the ball has a nice history because we played at Santiago Bernabeu. The employees used to play once per season at the Santiago Bernabeu, and that's the, the, the ball we use in one, of the, in one of the games. So there are um, this shows my two passions, football and Formula One. I have to say that after working eight years for Real Madrid, I'm more passionate about Formula One than football. <laughs> so, well, th that kind of thing uh, happens. Oops, I think there's a problem with the presentation. Well, I'll try to, because it's cut, Let's do it today. Okay, no problem. First of all, I want you to understand that working in a sport, I mean, a sport is something, it's based on emotion, passion, it talks directly to your heart, but working in a sport is a job. I mean, if you think that you are going to work at Real Madrid and you are going to have the mobile phone number of Belligan or uh, any other player, it's not true. I mean, they are completely separate, the business area with the sports area. Probably in some position you have the opportunity to work with the players, but they are players, you are executive, and usually they are uh, worlds apart. Okay? And this is something that told me a good friend of mine, Pablo Ortiz Donaire, that uh, right now is working for, for Real Betis. And 
I think this is a, a good sentence or a good description of what happens. You will never see sports uh, the same way again. I mean, it's going to be something completely different. You are not a fan, but you are an executive working in a sports uh, entity. Being part of the industry inevitably leads to a significant loss of the romantic idea of sports. At the end of the day, you are going to have a budget, you have to reach your goals, and not goals uh, with the balls, but economic uh, goals that you have in your Excel uh, spreadsheet. So, unconditional love at a certain heart rate, lose intensity and fade away. I mean, you became less fun. I mean, you start thinking in sports as an executive with numbers, with uh, PowerPoints and those kind of, of tools but becomes a job, something that you have to do every day. You have to go uh, to the office, you have to, play, uh, to work uh, eight hours, and probably you, are, you also have to work during the weekend, or blah, 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 blah. So at that time, um, it's, it's um, really uh, necessary to understand that it's a job, okay? It's not fun, or well, could, could be fun, but uh, you know, some of the myths everybody has in their, in their brains about uh, what working for a football club means, uh, probably a run, okay? So, this is very important because I am, uh, you are the future of this industry, and you are the, the people that has to change it. Sports, as we'll, we will see later, it's a young industry. I mean, the, the maybe it's 30 years old. So uh, things are changing uh, quickly, and uh, you are going to be the responsible to do it better and to improve how sports work in terms of business and uh, in terms of uh, big data and uh, innovation and those kind of, of things and, and the business it, itself, how, how it works internally. But it also means that uh, it takes, uh, or it means a big responsibility for all of you. When working for a sport entity, I mean, you are in the middle of the um, vision of all the people around you, media, fans, and the good thing is sports is like an amplification. If you do it right, it's a good amplification. If you do it wrong, it's a bad amplification. So. You have to be very careful because um, sometimes you, you will make a fall and uh, sometimes you will make uh, things in a, in a great way in order to improve how, how things work. As I told you, football is a small industry. Um, in Spain, the government uh, data said that there are 271 thousand people working in the sports, recreation, and entertainment. That means people working in things as far as sport as uh, amusement parks. So <laughs> you can imagine that uh, it's not the whole number of people working for, for a sport, but that's the only official uh, figure I can, I can get. If you are to, let, let me ask you something. Which one of you want to work for, uh, in football? Could you raise your hand? Oh, that's great. There's a lot, but uh, well, not not all of you. That's great. I, I will I will ask you later about other other sports. Just to give you an idea, there's around 10,000 people working in football clubs in Spain, in the second and the uh, sorry first and second tier. 10,000 people, and if you discount the 50% working for the sports uh, department and the business department, you have 5,000. And in that number is also included the people in the ticketing uh, office or uh, the security area that, who wants to work in the security area of a football club? No one, okay. <laughs> so, again, the real number, approximate, an approximation, is about 40, uh, sorry, um, 4,500 uh, people working in sponsorship, um, innovation, digital, those kind of really nice areas where the, um, 
probably most of you want to, want to work at, uh, at. So, in Spain, 4,000 4, people is, uh, I mean, I was, uh, I asked to the organizer of World Football Summit about the number of attendees to the, to the show, and th there are close to 2,000, so that means 50% of the industry is here. <laughs> okay, so that, that's not uh, right, because uh, there's also people coming from, from other countries. But in order to understand what this number means, is the double of the people you can meet here. So it's not a big number. So this means it's really, really difficult to work in a sport. Really, really challenging. Okay? Let's talk about the cons and pros of uh, working, in, working in sports. Um, I'm going to speak about what I know, I mean, about uh, football. In uh, football in Spain, just to give you uh, an idea of, uh, uh, of, of the market I, I really know with, with detail. In Spain, in the first and second division, there are just 42 clubs, okay? So it's very difficult to find a job in a, in a, in a sports uh, entity, in a, football, in a football club. I also have to say that most of the clubs, probably with the exception of Real Madrid and uh, Barcelona, they are a small organization and a very horizontal one with no, so many people and probably people uh, selling uh, sponsorship and also um, defining the strategy of the member tickets for the next season. So they are really, really small. I mean, it's a, when you go to, a, a, to the smaller clubs of second tier, they can probably have 10, 15 employees. That's uh, nothing. So <laughs> that means that you have to do a lot of different, different things um, during, your, during your day. And also, there's a lack of investment in the business areas. I mean, in football, the core business is the players. All, about 70% of the budget goes to pay the salaries of the, of the players. And that means that the rest of the budget, 30%, is to pay also for the executives and to make campaigns and those kind of things. But usually, all the money goes to the sports area of the club. And the business area of the club is the one that has to get the money into the, into the club. Not uh, if you need uh, to buy some software tool, you're going to have a problem. Because you have to spend or you have to invest money in, uh, in something that usually is not a, a I mean, it's usually is a, is a problem because your box doesn't want to accept it. And uh, again, I'm talking in general, there are probably examples like Real Madrid or Barcelona that uh, this is not true. But in most of the cases, it's going to be a, a, a big problem to, to invest and to have the right tools uh, you need to do or, or you can find in another, in another companies. And again, this is a, a good comparison. The working in a sport means that you are going to be quite far from the big companies in terms of employee benefits. For example, when I was working for, for Telefonica, I had my credit card, my corporate credit card. I have stock options. I have my uh, health, uh, uh, well, I'm different, different things. When I moved to Real Madrid, no visa, no stock option, of course, it's impossible. <laughs> no, no health insurance, no, so this is quite different in terms of uh, a normal business or working in another, in another industry. So when you have to negotiate, or probably you, you'll never negotiate, <laughs> because if someone called you, like I said, uh, uh, that's my, my case, and called you and said, do you want to work for Real Madrid? You're going to say yes. And maybe two days later, you are, uh, what about the salary? <laughs> so um, that's what we call the emotional salary, because it's something that uh, 
pays you uh, more than the normal salary in money. Again, it's talking to your heart instead of your, of your pocket. But believe me that that kind of things tend to fight, uh, fade, as, as, uh, as Pablo said at the, at the beginning. Um, is uh, when, when you spend 12 hours working at the office and you see your uh, bank account, <laughs> you say, okay, it's really great, it's great to work in football, but maybe I have to think in another, in another industry also. But anyway, this is what I'm saying about the smaller salaries due to the, to the emotional salary, because nobody is going to negotiate, and if someone calls you in order to work in a football club, you are going to say yes in the, in the first uh, second. But I don't want to be just negative. There's, another, there's also positive things. As I told you, we are in a really, really young industry. Uh, probably, the, I think I have in the, yeah, I have the, um, a bigger explanation in the next slide. <coughs> but we are in the, in the beginnings of the sports as a business. Um, You have, I, I remember when I started working for Real Madrid, uh, you are very lucky right now, because in the year 2000, there's no LinkedIn, no as much blogs uh, as you have now, that you can check a lot of information. I mean, we have internet, of course, but uh, mostly uh, website, but there's not a lot of people creating content around uh, everything as, as today. So. We had to invent everything from the very beginning. Uh, as, I, as I was talking to you, just an example, when I started working for Real Madrid, one of the first uh, projects I had to do was to create the new official website. Because when, uh, um, before, there was just a corporate website with info for the members and those kind of things, something more legal. Or, but my goal was to create a website for the fans with a lot of information, with a lot of uh, pictures, uh, sounds, uh, video, more or less, because at that time the communication was not as fast as, as uh, it is now. And I have no reference. I mean, I started doing some research in, the, in other entertainment industries, like uh, movies, because uh, at the end of the day, they have the characters, or they have the actors, and we have players. So there are some similar things in terms of uh, how we promote uh, the players, or how we promote the, the matches, or this kind of, of things. And the design of the different options. I, I was doing some kind of, uh, some type of research with uh, music, with, uh, as I told you, with movies, and I also have to check the NFL sites, the NBA, and, uh, well, a lot of things, because there was no reference. We have to invent uh, from, from scratch. So was, well, it took us about three months. Because also, I mean, working for, for the in internet means that you are a horizontal department, and you have to work with the different areas of the club. Uh, I started having meetings with all the guys from the club, from the basketball, uh, from the foundation, the tickets department, and those kind of things, asking, okay, I can do a lot of things, but tell me, what's your goal? How can I help, me, uh, can I help you uh, using internet in order to, to reach your, your goals? So, was like a consultant, <laughs> and, uh, and I had to, to, well, to understand what it means. That was a, a very nice uh, period of my life because uh, in one month I really understood how football works because I have the opportunity to meet everybody in the different areas and understand what the foundation da did and, um, and all, the, all the areas of the, of the club. <coughs> so this is very good because, I mean, there's a lot of things to do yet. I mean, you have to invent things that probably today we don't know that are going uh, to exist in the future. 
um, augmented reality. Uh, well, who, who knows what is gonna, what, what are we gonna have in 10 years' time? Probably, uh, as I told you, when I started working for Real Madrid, Instagram doesn't exist, not Twitter, not LinkedIn, not YouTube, for example. So things have changed a lot in, in the last 23 years, and probably they are gonna change even more in the next uh, 20 years with uh, Apple glasses and those kind of uh, uh, things that we are going to see in the, in the future. So you have an opportunity to create new things. And as I told you, you, also have, you, are, gonna, you are going to have also the responsibility of uh, how it works. The second thing, and for me is the best one, is the emotional impact that you are going to create in fans. I mean, sometimes working in, at your desk is, uh, is far from the, from the fans. I mean, you are thinking with an executive um, mind about how to put the things in the website, uh, this, like. but, and I used to do it a lot during the games, I, uh, I check the opinion of the, of the fans at the street and ask them about the website and that was something really, really interesting because I, uh, um, I can feel that my war was impacting his, uh, his heart. <coughs> and again, it's not the same like working uh, when, when I was working for Telefonica. That is, okay, the mobile phone is working, that's great. But, <laughs> but this is something that is more emotional than working in any other, any other company. The third thing is that industry, as I told you, it's down. Most of the people, including myself, came from other industries, and you probably you are going to be probably the first um, generation that started working in, in a sport from, from the beginning. I have another kind of culture, and I'm moving to a sport, um, I'm bringing also some problems I found in other industry. I didn't arrive to sport with a <coughs> with a, with an empty empty mind. No, I have. Uh, that's good because I had experience from other industries. But at the end of the day, you are gonna create from from scratch, and I think is is something very good because I, I <coughs> sorry, I'm gonna drink some water. Because all the, uh, the old guys, like myself, has to uh, leave the industry and let you enter and work with new um, workflows, with uh, new ideas, and, uh, and you are the one that understands to the current fan. They are young, you are also user of uh, social networks, you are content creators, so you are, um, I'm far from that generation but you are really close and you can understand and you can create the new sport business industry uh, for, the, for the fans, for the, current, for the current fans. I also have to say that things are changing for the better. I mean, we have a lot of services, not only internet, but the, the um, life has changed in the last uh, 23 years. Is, uh, for me, my, my little sister was living in New York, and uh, 30 years ago, it was impossible to make a video call with her because we don't have the, the tools. Right now, I can do it with my mobile phone from, from here. So we have a lot of tools in order to improve the fan experience uh, in sports. And uh, this helped us a lot to create new services or create content and those kind of things for, for the future. In the year 2000, we have two or three tools. Right now, you have tens or even hundreds of, of them to, to, to make a better job for, for fans. Also, in terms of in economic terms, um, we are probably also living one of the best times in the industry because probably all of you knows about the CBC, uh, all the fans, all the American owners of uh, 
um, NFL clubs invest in, in uh, Premier or even uh, clubs in, in Spain. So there's a lot of money coming to the industry, and usually money helps to improve the industry and to do uh, things better and to generate, again, uh, a bigger impact in the, <coughs> in the industry. And also, there's a big ecosystem of uh, companies around the, around the sports. And this is the moment I, I said that, I mean, it's really, really hard to find a job in a football club or even in a basketball team. So you always have to think in a plan B or a backup. I mean, if you cannot work for Real Madrid or Barcelona, that again, is really, really hard, uh, you have another opportunities. You can work in Nike, Red Bull, Dazon. There are companies that they are in the sports ecosystem that probably has good things from the normal companies, uh, like the credit card, corporate credit card, <laughs> or the stock options, and they are close to the sport industry, so you are still working in a sport, but from a big, uh, from another uh, corporate. Uh, and I, I, I thought it a lot of times. If uh, someone, if, if Jose Angel, instead of calling me and say, do you want to join Real Madrid? He called me and said, do you want to join Apple? And probably I will be uh, happier working for Apple than Real Madrid because they have the money, they have the technology, and they can, I, I'm an innovation guy, so uh, technology, uh, putting the Apple or the phone or, or Nike technology in, in a sport is also a great, uh, a great idea. And uh, again, you are working in a sport, but with the benefits of a, of a big company. But believe me, have a backup, have a plan B. Don't uh, think that your only goal is working in the football club or the basketball or the NFL club that you, that you think. Um, well, I told you about the awesome evolution that we are probably have in the next 10 to 20 years. I cannot tell you nothing about this because I don't know, and uh, nobody knows. <laughs> so, but I think it's going to be uh, awesome. And the last one is something that probably sounds stupid right now, but wasn't at my time. One executive moving from Real Madrid to Barcelona was something can happen, can happen. Because again, people think that you are working there because of your heart. And no, I'm an executive. I, I change my, my job if they pay more. <laughs> no, no problem of if I have better condition or a better project or whatever. That. And, not, at, and my time was, uh, when I was younger, was impossible. Round now is not a problem. I have a friend that has been working, was a former colleague of, me, of mine, that uh, we worked together at Real Madrid, then he moved to another company, uh, then he moved to Atletico de Madrid, and right now he's working in another company also in, in sports. So working for Real Madrid and Atletico de Madrid 20 years ago was something uh, that cannot happen. But right now it's not a problem. I mean, people understand that it's an industry, it's, it's like this, the same like working for Telefonica and then move to Vodafone or Orange or another telecom company. I mean, nothing, hap nothing happens. Just to give you an example, as I told you at the beginning, when, when I arrived to, when I joined Real Madrid, the revenue was 100 and, uh, yeah, 110 million. Right now, is uh, the budget for this season, uh, well, I, I put the number of the pre-COVID, um, but the budget of this season is around 750 million also. They are small. If you look at the ranking of companies in Spain, Real Madrid is in, in the 220 position. I mean, Mercadona, you know, the supermarket, <laughs> uh, the revenue is 500,000 uh, 500, in the same year. So it's, I don't know, 30 times bigger. So, and probably Real Madrid brand is bigger and is well-known all around the world. Mercadona is probably just a, 
uh, local company, but Real Madrid is well known. And also, I, I put this example, but it's the same for FC Barcelona or, or even another club like uh, Atletico de Madrid with the smaller uh, figures. But again, it, when you compare it with a big company like Mercadona or Telefonica, the numbers are, are really low. So that means that we, we still have a long way to, to, to run. We have a lot of things to do. We have to uh, monetize the funds. We have to create new products and services. We have to uh, get uh, or communicate with all the funds we have around the world. So there's a lot of things that you, all of you, can do in the, in the future. And just to give you some examples of how young the, the industry is, the first jersey sponsor in Spain was in the uh, 1981, that Teca sponsored in Real Zaragoza, uh, the match they play against Real Madrid. It's, <laughs> it's a funny, <laughs> it's a funny uh, information. But uh, I mean, it's uh, 40, 42 years ago, I mean, probably it's a long time for you. No, no one of you was uh, born at that time. But in terms of uh, a whole industry, it's 40, 40 years is, is nothing. So again, it means that you have to do, uh, there's a lot, a lot of things you can do. In the year 2000, Florentino becomes uh, president of Real Madrid. That is not a question that I've been work, I, I worked for, for Real Madrid, but he changed the mentality of the clubs. He uh, created the, the, the circle. I mean, if you win, uh, you got a lot of money from a sponsor, from competition, and if you get a lot of money, you can hire or buy better players, and if you have better players, you can win, and you get more money, you buy players. So he changed the, the, the mentality of the sport industry, and the first thing he did was to create a marketing department, because when I joined Real Madrid, the marketing department was three people. And uh, two years later, later, I think we, we are 32, 33 uh, people working at the, just at the marketing department. Because we, we, we had to create everything from the main sponsorship package that we have to include all the assets and all the rights from the different areas of, of, the, of the club, including the things like today are normal, but at that time, uh, was no normal. So um, he changed and, and, and he hired people from other industries. Uh, Jose Angel Sanchez, the uh, managing director of Real Madrid, came from other industries, from video games. Uh, myself, from uh, Telefonica, and everybody there came from another industry. The sponsorship guys came from a, an agency. So we create a talented and no, nobody asks us if we are Real Madrid fans. You are a good professional, and I want you to join us in order to create something, something big. And nobody asks me never if I'm a Real Madrid fan. So that's very important. Also, to give you an idea, uh, Instagram was born uh, 13 years ago. So <laughs> looks like something that has been uh, there always on our mobile phone, but just 13, uh, 13 years. In 2015, we have the, the, second, uh, the second situation that changed the, the business um, in, in, in football in Spain. That uh, Before that, all the clubs uh, sold their TV rights individually to different television. There was a mess. Um, and the government uh, obliged to the clubs to uh, give the rights to the to the to La Liga and sell all the rights uh, uh, collectively. That means that all the clubs from Real Madrid to the last one get Real Madrid and Barcelona got the same money, but the other clubs uh, increase their 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 revenue from from audiovisual rights. That means again that more money, you can buy better players, uh, you can win, and you can compete, and those kind of things. And uh, that happened 
eight years ago. Again, it's something really, really, really new. And uh, for example, Dazon, they started their operation four years ago. So again, there's a long way to, uh, to run, and who knows what is going to happen uh, next year. First thing, and all of you probably know, is to ask, what is my dream job in a sport? So, uh, football, could you raise your hand? Basketball? No basketball. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, tennis? No. Motorsports? Ah, that's great. And uh, so that's really important. I mean, football is a big industry, and the others are smaller and uh, probably need uh, even more professionalization in some cases. I mean, not motorsports or not tennis, but uh, for example, basketball is 10 times uh, smaller than, than football. That means a smaller budget, a smaller resources, and those kind of, of things. And um, what about the entities do you want to work for? Who wants to work for a club? Raise your hand. Clubs. Federations? <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, players agency? Who want to? Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's great. And uh, media? Who want to work in something related to media, like the Sun or Movistar or... Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not an exam, I mean. <laughs> Someone want to work in something completely different? In, I don't know, boxing or wrestling or something like that? <laughs> yeah, you? <laughs> okay, that's great. This is, the WWE is, some, is amazing, it's amazing. It's a, I don't know if it is a sport, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, a, it's you really enjoy it. The three hours of the show, you are dancing, uh, singing. It's, a, it's amazing. It's amazing. I think football has to learn a lot of other uh, activities. And, um, okay, this, is, this used to be my presentation for uh, a Spanish student. So uh, probably it's not the same here, but I also asked them about uh, if they want to work in Spain or they are open to go abroad. Because my advice is always try to work in the United States, in the, in the UK, or even in Japan or other countries, but United States and the UK are my favorites. Because it's easier. I mean, there's, the industry is bigger. And uh, you are going to learn a lot about how do they uh, manage uh, a sports business. And when you came back to Spain or your country, you are going to have a line saying that you have been working as marketing assistant of uh, Dallas Cowboys. And that makes a bigger, a big difference when, they are, when, when the people from human resources is uh, filtering the, the resumes of the curriculum in order to choose one. So working in sports in the United States is, I have a friend that is working, uh, he worked for an NBA team, and he called me because he wanted to get back to, to Spain, and please help me. I did a couple of phone calls, and he was working for a football club three weeks later. So it's easy. It's easier, I mean. So in my opinion, that's, uh, that's something that, that you have to do, okay? And, um, and the last one is, is the, the department of the area in a club. Uh, as I told you, the smaller clubs, usually the one selling a sponsorship is, all, is also in charge of the ticketing strategy or negotiating the, the TV rights or those kind of, of things. But the big clubs, like Real Madrid or Barcelona, and I will show you later the, the, the chart of, of the... But you, you must know what 
area or what, which area do you want to work for? So a sponsorship, could you raise your hand? Sponsorship, you, you, okay. You, okay. Finance, oh, that's great. Uh, marketing, in general, perfect. Licensing, <laughs> uh, communication, okay, that's great. Any other interest? Sorry? Recruitment, that's great, yeah. That's really interesting. So just to show you how big uh, clubs like Real Madrid are, this is the chart of the... <laughs> uh, from the general, well, the president, of course, the general manager, you have the, it's on the website. I mean, it's something public, no. Um, but you can check how many different areas they have, because it's getting more and more professional, and they have uh, a specific uh, artist, <laughs> let's call them, in, uh, in, a, in, any, in all the areas, okay? But it's very, very big. And um, in order to, to, to find a job in a sport, that is the, the thing that uh, I'm talking about, I, there are two main things. One is learning, okay? And the second one is networking. And let's go about, <coughs> well, learn English, okay? <laughs> That's my advice for uh, the Spaniards. Um, but the second one is understand digital. I mean, we live in a digital world. I don't say that you must know about the technology behind big data or artificial intelligence, but you must understand what uh, the different digital tools uh, you have, because digital is in every department, all of them. In, even uh, human resources, uh, ticketing, uh, sponsorship, all of them has to uh, work with, uh, with, digital <coughs> with digital tools. So you must understand it. You don't need to be an expert, but you need to know about, uh, about it. Of course, get a degree in sports. And for me, it's very important to be the number one, or try to be the number one. Because you are, you are going to have a big competence, even with your colleagues, that, that are, uh, they are going to be your first competitors in order to, to achieve your, your goal. So you have to be number one. And you have to work more than everyone. And you have to learn every day. It's not a question of just going to class and, OK, OK, I'm going to make the sum. No, no, no. You have to understand it, look, more, uh, look for more information, talk to the teachers you have. Um, you probably have uh, executive from the industry. You have to learn about what he's doing, uh, you have to um, talk with them after the class. So it's not a question of being normal, but try to be excellent. <coughs> well, be active, learn, ask. Uh, networking is start with your own classmates, because probably some of you is going to work for a sport, and probably you are going to ask or call to your colleagues that you know they are good and they can, or you can work uh, together. So it's important to, to have a relationship with, uh, with you and keep it on, on time. I have to say that the, that the man who called me to join Real Madrid was my former colleague uh, 14 years before. So. <laughs> I, you have to keep the relationship because they are very important and also in the industry. If you choose another, another um, specialty, I mean, if you want to work in the big data uh, area of the club, again, you have to be the number one. That's what happened to me. I mean, I was one of the top guys in the internet industry in Spain because I worked for Telefonica. I was the employee number 10 of Terra. We have a lot of uh, services. I was some, somewhere important in the industry, and they called me because they need that kind of profile. And look, oh, that one. And I, I'm, I know him. I've, we have been working together in the past. So 
okay, I, I don't have to send my resume, nothing. Just they call me and say, do you want to join us? That's all. Because, so you have to be number one in, in your specialty, human resources, in media, or I don't know, content production, innovation, all you can, you can imagine. Again, learn every day. You are very lucky because you have access to mountains of information. Uh, website, uh, newsletters, reports, uh, books. Uh, you also have LinkedIn and Twitter X. Or, and, uh, and you can learn from the industry leaders. And uh, that's something really, really nice that we hadn't, haven't uh, 20, years, 20 years ago. And <clears throat> Again, and this is a very important, I, I've been talking about this with uh, Atletico de Madrid, former colleague, and uh, find inspiration in other industries. The football or sports in general has a problem that it creates a bubble around you and you cannot exit that bubble because you spend a lot of time working, it's, very, it's a very important job, uh, you work for a big club and you are 24 hours thinking in the same and even more on the weekend because you have your club or team playing. So you spend a lot of time thinking in your, in your uh, uh, sport. And that's really bad because you can find the inspiration in another thing. That guy gave me an example of uh, IKEA. That uh, they, when, when you choose uh, some furniture, uh, well, I'm not going to explain to you, but he found something interesting for Atletico de Madrid visiting IKEA. So, again, go to conference of another um, type of contents, not only sports, but, I don't know, art or wh whatever. I mean, you never know where the inspiration is. And it's also the great time to stop thinking in your problems or your daily problems. So. Try to keep out of that, uh, of that bubble. It's really interesting. And networking. This is the, well, networking is important in every industry. But in a sport, it's essential. It's essential. You have to be, um, um, again, you have to be the number one. You have to stand out. You have to build your personal brand. And I was using my own example. That's my LinkedIn social selling index. It's in the 1%, in the top 1%. It took me three years to achieve this. So it's not a question of reading something. No, no it's a, you have to work every day. You have to, I spend three or four hours a daily on, uh, on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, I reach the best 100% uh, 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 of the LinkedIn in the, in the sports industry. So I'm a reference for, for the people of the, of the industry. And again, it took me three years. So uh, you, you can, now we have the tools to create content. Uh, I have some friends that get a job because, because they write a newsletter. And someone like it and say, OK, I have to, I need. Uh, a profile with uh, these uh, skills. Uh, well, I love this guy. I'm gonna make. A, I'm gonna call him. And right now he's working in in the sports industry. Uh, so you can you, and don't be shy. I mean, all of us started from zero sometimes. So you are, you, you don't need to be the the most clever guy or the most um, clever the smart pe people or person. Uh, at the beginning, but okay, you you will learn in the in your uh, in your way. So create content in the social network. LinkedIn is perfect for for you, and uh, but create uh, newsletters, have an opinion, um, write messages, uh, answer to the to to the industry, and be patient. I mean, if you try to contact with. Uh, I don't know, the marketing director of FC Barcelona, and uh, he doesn't answer you, it's not a problem. I, I also have that, uh, that problem. I try to contact with someone, and he doesn't reply me. And you can probably think, no, no, he's in the top 1%. So everybody's, oh, yes, yes, yes. No, it's not true. 
I also have the, the same problem. So any, anyway, you need time, you need to be patient, and you have to work and work. And build relationship with the, with the colleagues from the industry. You are in the right uh, place today, because I always, I, I, this is my seventh, yeah, the seventh edition of World Football Summit, and this is the seventh time I, I attend. Because it's the time when you can meet the people from the industry in two days, you can meet all of your friends, former colleagues, and the guys from the, from the industry. And everybody likes to talk about themselves. So ask them, what are you doing, how things are going, and those kind of things. Because at the end of the day, you must be a reference for those person. If someone see you in LinkedIn, in a, a Twitter, uh, in person, or he, oh, this uh, girl is writing a lovely newsletter about tennis or whatever, you are going to be in his or her top of mind. And you don't have to compete with the other 2,000 ex potential executive that is going to send the resume when, uh, when they have an, an open position. So try to, and I mean, something sometimes is terrible, but you have to work, work, work. And sometimes you go to an event, event and uh, you cannot talk with uh, someone. It's not a problem. Next time, OK? And uh, I, I'm going to close this with um, some advice from friends from the, from the history, industry, like um, Javier Lozano is the president of the Spanish uh, Futsal Association. And uh, he said that you shouldn't wait to find the job you love, because sometimes it's an, an idealized marriage. Learn to love the work that you have to do. This is what I told you at the beginning. I mean. Working in a sport is, is nice, it's something different, but it's not the only goal on, on your life. So try to do what you want, and, uh, and don't think that you are going to work with uh, Xavi or with Vinicius, or with <laughs> because it's really, really difficult to... There are probably five person, seven person that can have that relationship with uh, Real Madrid or FC Barcelona player, so it's tough. Um, this one is uh, Kim Domenech, is the senior vice president content in, at the zone. And, well, you can read it, I don't <laughs> So again, he's saying the same. You have to make a difference. I mean, it's not enough with being a good, uh, um, community manager or a good uh, content creator, you have to aim for uh, uh, to be the, the the best one, because you want to work at the best sport entity. So you also have to be the 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 best one. This is Patricia Rodriguez, is the former CEO at Granada, Elche, and, and Eibar, and again, he said that you have to be a brand and you have to work for yourself. And uh, sometimes, when, when you are, if, if you demonstrate that you can build a great personal brand, it's also something really interesting for the um, clubs or companies or, or whatever uh, in order to, to hire you. So this is a, oops, las comillas han ido. Okay. And attract the attention of, of potential employees. employees. So, and uh, Paula is the Global Partnership Manager uh, Europe and Middle East at the uh, NBA. And passing, passing, hard work, dedication, perseverance, you can achieve anything, like in sports. And he knows very well because she has spent years working in a human resources company, but she wants to work for, for sports. And, uh, he moved to Singapore. He has spent a couple of years there. And then he moved back to Spain. And right now, she's working at the Madrid office of uh, NBA Madrid, Madrid office. Okay? So he knows well about the passion. 
So just to finish, um, I think this is a time, it's a time for, for change, not only in sports, things are changing a lot in, in, in the whole world, and we can make a difference. I mean, you, all of you, can make a difference in the, in the future. This is for the Hunger Games, okay? So that's all. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I always wanted to do this. <laughs> One more thing. <laughs> Okay, I have a, a, a wrote a book because every day I have someone in LinkedIn asking, asking for advice about how they can find a job and those kind of things. So I decide to write a, to write a, a guide. Unfortunately, it is in Spanish, so I'm translating to English. So give me one week <laughs> and uh, you can download you, the, the URL is ready. You can use it in a couple of, uh, sorry, maybe next Tuesday or, or Wednesday. And you will have all the samples we talk about and more information. It's about 100 uh, pages and you have 50 or 60 pages with my advice and then uh, advice from some uh, people from the industry giving their uh, ideas or advice uh, about how how you can work uh, in in a sport and right now is the end so thank you very much good luck in your <laughs> any question please wait a minute ah. uh. You mentioned how we are the generation to make a change uh, in the industry. So the main question that I have for you is, in sports, there are already existing structures. So how would you be able to tackle those barriers of being able to make changes in or already existing structures and already existing cultures and ideologies and all of that? Well, I, I think we, we need, in sports, we need a generation renewal. First of all, and we need to change that that culture. So you are the responsible. I mean, the people entering in the in the industry, because the people that is working right now, I mean, they're gonna make business as usual. They're not gonna change anything. And if you are 60 years old, you don't want to change anything. You want to retire, get your money, and, and that's all. You don't want problems. So you are the responsible of these kind of things. I mean, it's not you, but someone that can start moving the ball. And probably it's going to take years. I mean, not two or three or four years, maybe 20. Yeah. But things are going to change. And again, it's your responsibility. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any, any question? <laughs> um, thank you for that. Uh, my question to you is um, a lot of companies outside of sports, they use different uh, systems for when you submit I can, can you hear? Is that better? Right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, a lot of companies outside of sports, um, they use different systems for when you apply, like to look at resumes and stuff. Within the sporting sector, within clubs and agencies and stuff like that, are they using similar systems? Are they using systems from years before? Um, the reason I ask this is for a lot of people, you submit resumes, but you never get a response back. So even after the resumes have been fine-tuned hundreds of times. So what kind of systems are, are, are sports entities using? And what are some tips that can help us sort of get through to the next level in the interview process? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get it. Uh, what kind of system do they? For the resumes. Uh, so when you submit the resumes, a lot of companies have an automatic system that sort of just, you know, segregates the resumes and just filters through it automatically. Do the uh, sports teams and clubs, do they use the same systems? Do they use the ones from years before? Or do they not use the systems at all? Like, how does that process work? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know about the, the answer of, of the data. If you want, we can talk right after this. Okay? Thank you. Any more questions?
Hello, Miguel. Thanks for the presentation. It was Welcome. really interesting and useful, I think. I um, read also your paper before about getting to the sport industry. I would ask you about um, a little framework about the Spanish sports. Not only football, maybe you know some other kind of sport. They are more coming in the next years, about more uh, incoming events or another uh, sport that will be interesting for looking at opportunities. Well, I talk about football because it's the, the industry I know, where, where I've been working at for, for, seven, for eight years. So that, well, 23 years in reality. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's the bigger industry in, in a sports. And, um, you know, it's difficult to say. I mean, uh, there's not a, 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 a framework in order to... to I cannot see you. Don't matter. <laughs> the lights are, are terrible. No, I mean, um, basketball is also a, a great uh, uh, sport in terms of business, but the clubs are even smaller than, than uh, football. So the structure are also uh, smaller, so it's even more difficult to, to work. And uh, who knows what is coming in the, in the next uh, coming years. For me, it's something really, really interesting to understand the mix between sports and entertainment. Something like we were talking about the WWE, uh, that is something really interesting, or the Kings League. Probably some of you have been following the Kings League, and this is really interesting. For me, in my, in my opinion, I, I was attending all the discussion with the owners of the club instead of watching the, the games. So, well, you are the target of, of this kind of uh, uh, contents, and you can understand better what, where things are moving to. You're welcome. Monica, yeah? Or... Sí. Okay. So, thank you very much. And remember, tomorrow at 1 p.m. here. Okay? Thank you.